One of the best investments that you can make in your YouTube channel is to identify repetitive parts of your recording workflow and either remove, automate, or optimize them. Pretty much any investment of time or money that you can make up front that's gonna save you time repetitively down the road is really worth exploring. So in this video, I'm gonna share the recording optimizations I've made after 10 years of being a creator on YouTube. So one example is having lights and a camera that's permanently set up that you can just turn on without even leaving your chair. But that's just one example. That's just the half of the automation that I wanna talk about in this video. So let me share 10 things that I've done to my recording workflow that's either eliminated steps, automates, or has been just a one-time setup and then it's good forever. All right, so the first thing is the lighting setup. So when I first started using good lights, I would just use regular tripod stands and I would set them up every single time because I didn't have a lot of space and it wasn't until I bought some wall mounts, but this is honestly like one of my favorite things that I've ever gotten for my YouTube setup. The best thing is I can just set up my lights and leave them there. I don't ever have to break them down or set them up saves a ton of time and I'm able to get the lights closer and just have a lot more flexibility of the positioning of where I put the lights so wall mounted light mounts wall mounts for lights wall light mounts wall mounted lights all right so the second thing is the amount of time it took me to get up and go and switch on every single individual light uh, it was a pain. So that's when I found this DJ light controller. I actually got it used on Craigslist or Facebook or something like that. And all it is is a bank of switches with a, an additional like power strip and you just plug stuff into it. It doesn't have to be lights, it can be anything. Anything that you plug into the wall, you can plug into this power strip and you can control it right from this switchboard. So I have all of my lights plugged into this uh, DJ light controller and now I can control all of my lights right here from my desk. It's awesome. All right, the third thing is, you know, once you kind of move past using a webcam or something like that, you want to get a nice camera. Uh, the thing that you quickly realize is it's such a pain to have the video file saved to the camera and then you have to transfer it to the computer either with USB or you know pulling the, the card out of the camera and plugging it into the computer. So I bought an Elgato video card. So it takes an HDMI input. So I needed, I do have an HDMI output on the camera. So I got a special cable so I could go from the camera to the Elgato card. So the video feed goes right into my computer and I can use it basically as a webcam feed. And so I can, I can choose that uh, video source from inside OBS and record my video directly to the computer so that eliminates the entire step of having to transfer files from the camera to the computer. And tip number four is an easy one. When you have a DSLR camera, they all use batteries. But if you buy either a USB cable, so my camera, I can actually charge with the USB cable. So I have a dedicated USB cable to supply power to the camera and that completely eliminated me having to think of batteries. So I love finding little tips like this where it's like a small little investment of time or money. You buy a thing, you use it, you you install it, and now you've completely el eliminated a step of your pro from your process. So it just frees up that mental bandwidth for other things. Number five is similar to the lighting setup. I used to use a tripod that I would have to set up every time for my camera. And I then, uh, installed a permanent 
ball head mount to my, I have like a custom monitor stand that I built and have this ball head permanently mounted right in between my two monitors. And my camera basically sits there most of the time. I do have, uh, I'm a father of twins, so I do grab my camera from time to time to go, um, you know, take pictures of the girls. But most times my camera is mounted right here, ready to go. So I can record a YouTube video at any moment. And tip number six is really important as well. If you are the type of person who uses your camera for other things, make sure this is kind of a two part tip. Make sure you save a preset for your YouTube setup. Now this is especially helpful if you have like a permanent studio with permanent lights that are always going to be dialed in at the same brightness and you have everything, you know, all your lighting dialed into what you want. One of the most important things you'll want to do if you're lucky enough to have that kind of setup is to dial in your white balance to a set number. Don't leave auto white balance on because you might get fluctuations with the color temperature as you're recording and it can kind of make your, your video look weird. Um, but just in general, like getting your frame rate, your aperture, your shutter speed, like all of your video settings, like the, the video quality, having all of those settings you know, experiment with it, find something you like, dial it in, lock it into a preset. So you know, every time you turn on the camera, if you did use it previously in a different mode, you can just go to your preset, lock it in, and you'll be confident that you're not gonna be having to throw away a video because the settings were off. Tip number seven deals with audio. So if you're using a nice mic that has an XLR uh, input, uh, most cameras, all cameras don't have an XLR input. So you're going to have to record your audio separately. And for many years, I used a, a separate audio recorder like this it has the XLR inputs right on the bottom there. Again, it was a pain. You'd have to transfer the files over to the computer once you were done recording. Uh, sometimes you would forget like the file name from the audio and the file name from the video and you'd have to like experiment to try to, you know, remember which audio track was the one that corresponds to which video track. And it gets even more complicated when you have screencasting because you also want to record the audio from the screencast if you're talking. Uh, that way you can match everything up afterwards. So to solve that, I have my microphone feeding into, I do use a preamp. It's a cloud lifter preamp. And from the preamp, it goes into my Focusrite Scarlett Solo. And again, this is another scenario where you dial your settings, you know, experiment over time and get your settings dialed and then don't touch them. Like get it set up and then don't touch it. This literally stays on all the time. I have the mic is hot, it's on, it's plugged in, it's going. It's it's a it's an audio input on my computer. I can use it for, you know, Zoom meetings or whatever else, but it's good to go. And so I just link it up into OBS as an audio input and it just, I can just use it when I'm ready to record um, a YouTube video. And tip number eight ties into microphone. Getting a good quality boom arm like this is really, really helpful because it's just here all the time. And I can swing it out of the way when I'm done, when I'm not recording. It's nothing I have to set up. So, so again, another example of a one-time investment of buying the boom arm and once you spend the time and money setting it up plug it in in plugging everything in and getting it all set up you don't have to spend that time again that is an investment of your time that is going to pay you off every single time you record a video so anytime you can identify stuff like that it's super valuable anytime you can do something that is going to save you time over and over and over into the future is really important to look at. Now, tip number nine is getting a stream deck. So a stream deck is a fully customizable macro custom keyboard that you can use to trigger uh, opening programs, triggering scripts, custom scripts, custom keyboard shortcuts, uh, hotkeys, all sorts of things 
and I have it set up. There's a very tight integration with OBS, which OBS is free, by the way. If you if you haven't heard of OBS, it can record your screen and uh, video just like this. I'm actually recording into OBS right now, and the Stream Deck has a very tight integration with OBS, so I can literally just press a button and start recording, and I can press another button and change to my screen. So just like this, you can see I've got my uh, the file I'm working on right now in the screen, and I can turn on my little webcam in the corner if I want to. So I created, instead of recording all of these three things separately, I now almost treat it as a live stream where I'm not actually you know streaming live, but I'm treating, I'm recording this as if it is a live stream. So when I want to go to a screencast, I just tap the button while I'm recording and it eliminates having to do all of this editing in post-production. Instead of having to decide when I want video to show up and when I want the screen to show up, I do it live as I'm presenting it, as I'm recording it. And the 10th thing that I did is I created a custom script using Auto Hotkey, which is a free program you can use to kind of automate mouse clicks and keyboard and controlling different things on your computer. I actually have another video on this kind of introducing auto hotkey if you want to check that one out after this video. But what it does, uh, what this specific script does is I tap a button on my stream deck and this little custom window pops up. And so I have a couple of uh, different YouTube channels. So I choose which channel I'm going to be creating a tutorial for. And this will determine which uh, template files are used in the creation of the tutorial. Then I choose which programs I want to have opened. If I'm creating the tutorial for the first time, I choose this one. If I've already created the template files for the tutorial and just need to like reopen these programs and resize them uh, for the proper screen capture, I can click this one and then I'll have it open OBS for me as well. And so when I click OK, it will prompt me for a the the folder location where I want to save it, and by default, it'll be in that YouTube channel's you know folder that I chose. Um, so I can either create most times I'll be creating a new folder for that specific tutorial, and then I choose a tutorial name. And then what it does is it copies my template files for my YouTube thumbnail, my uh, Premiere video template that I have that has a lot of like presets and things in it and copies it into that new folder. So I've completely eliminated the manual process of having to create new tutorial folders. And the other cool thing it does is it will go into the OBS settings and it will change the default folder location where it saves video files after I've recorded uh, video files on OBS. All right, so those are my 10 tips, uh, 10 things that I've done to uh, drastically increase my workflow. Um, I can pretty much literally start recording a YouTube video like within 20 or 30 seconds. Whereas in the past, you know, it could take me 20 to 30 minutes uh, to do that. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you wanna check out my auto hotkey uh, introduction video, you can check that one out right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.